And uh, in this video, we're going to be uh, looking at another question uh, that's very commonly asked. Uh, and this is again about uh, duplicates. So this is another variation of contains uh, duplicates. Now in this question, uh, along with the array, we are also given another condition that we need to check. So basically, um, we are given a condition that, that uh, if the duplicate uh, occurs or the element repeats, somewhere somewhere between two indices i and j so for example if you found uh, an item at index i and then you found that index at um uh, that item at index j if you do j minus i it should be less than equal to uh, k if it is less than equal to k that means you're going to return true Otherwise, you can return false. Okay, so let's take a, a look at the example to understand this question better. So we have this nums uh, array that has one, two, three, and one. And k's value is given as three. Okay, so what does this mean is basically if uh, the number repeats somewhere uh, between uh, three indices, so the difference between j and i is three or less than or equal to three, that means you're gonna return true. So let's see, one repeats at the fourth, in, fourth index. So if you do uh, J, uh, which is zero, one, two, three. So three minus zero, so that becomes three. So basically uh, it's equal to uh, three. So K is also three. That means we want to return true, okay? Now, another example is um, where one, zero, one, one is the array and k's value is one. Now, in this case, we say one repeats uh, at zero, one, two, okay? So, uh, and then um, in this case, we do, we're gonna do two minus zero, that comes two, which is not, um, basically, which is not satisfying the condition where it's not less than or equal to k. So we're gonna move forward. For zero, one, uh, they are not same. So we're gonna move forward and we're gonna land on one. So we're gonna say one and one, okay? Now in this case, this one is at index three, zero, one, two, three. Now three minus, this is at two, so two, so three minus two is one. That means k's value is uh, equal to one. That means we're gonna return true in this case, okay? Now, one more example. Um, let's hope this thing goes away, okay. So uh, another example is a better number is one, two, three, one, two, three, okay? And k's value is two, okay? Now, if you look at one, one is repeated at index three. So if you do three minus zero, then uh, zero, one, two, three. So three minus zero is three, which is not equal, which is greater than two. So uh, that doesn't satisfy. Let's take a look at two. So we have two at one first index and then two at uh, fourth index, okay? So four minus one is again three. And similarly, for three also, you can have the same result. So minimum distance in this array is going to be three, and k's value is two, so we're going to return as false. Okay, so with this, uh, I hope you understand the question a little bit better. Um, so we're going to, again, take a pause, and uh, you pause the video, uh, formulate your hypothesis, uh, come up with a potential solution, and then uh, resume the video to see what kind of solution we came up with, okay? All right, so hope that went well. So let's take a look what we got uh, for the solution. So uh, the main idea basically behind uh, this whole uh, coming up with the algorithm is to basically um, uh, that duplicate should uh, be calculated, the distance between the duplicates should be calculated between the indices while we are actually uh, looping through. 
that way we can keep our time complexity at minimum and we'll still be able to find that value of k okay so the, the basically the duplicate should be positioned in such a way where distance between their indices is less than or equal to k okay so let's take a look how we're gonna basically solve that right? uh so we have this uh, array and the distance given to us now we're going to create once again a dictionary or a map okay um with key value pair as integers and then uh, we're going to create this uh, minimum this is our running minimum so every single time we're going to compute this and initially for this minimum variable we're going to assign integer dot max uh, so maximum value of integer that's what you're going to assign okay so when we are comparing with another minimum uh you know uh that minimum overrides this value if we do integer dot min or zero or negative one uh, we may get a value that's actually smaller than that uh, i mean larger than that so that minimum is sticks so that's why we always for minimum variable whenever you are doing this uh we take int dot max and for our, forever we need maximum we'd say int dot min okay so we're gonna we need minimum so we're gonna do int dot max okay now next we're gonna iterate over each item now you <coughs> excuse me now you can do uh iteration uh from i zero to num count or you can do uh you can basically enumerate uh in, in swift you can enumerate uh on, on an array and that gives you uh index along with the item okay so we can you, as you can see like you, know, you can do the four i zero to count uh but uh in the code so that's one variation we in the code we're gonna see how we can do for in okay so yeah so you're gonna loop over each item and when you're when you're looping over each item, what you're gonna check is if that item already present in the dictionary. Okay, so if it's already present in the dictionary, um, then um, we're gonna do something with it. But let's move forward and see if it it doesn't exist in the dictionary. Then what we do? Okay, so if it doesn't exist in the dictionary, we're gonna we're gonna put that item in the dictionary with its index value okay remember we are we are basically calculating the uh, difference uh, the distance between two indices so that's why we need the index this time okay so we're going to keep that index in the dictionary and then we're going to loop over again now if the item is found in the dictionary we're going to take its previously stored index from the dictionary that's because that's been stored as a value and then we're going to compute the gap between uh, current index and the previous index. So remember, we are iterating forward. So that means the current index is going to be higher than the previous index. That's why we're going to take the current index and we're going to uh, subtract previous index from that. And this is again given that we have entered this condition because uh, the items are duplicate in this case. So we found a duplicate, we entered from the current index, we actually compute the um, previous index, we got the minimum value, oh, we got the gap, okay? Now we compare our current running minimum value, uh, and uh, if that value is the minimum than the gap. So which one is the minimum? Which one is the lowest uh, between these two? So min of gap that we just calculated and the minimum. Okay, so first time when you're gonna do it, you're gonna get n dot max for here. And uh, let's say if we are uh, taking a look like that one, two, three, one, two, three example, then first time you get three. So you get three here. So minimum is gonna store three, okay? Uh, now, once you have looped over all the elements, uh, you're going to have that dictionary um, with like, you know, indices updated, but you're also going to get, uh, going to have that minimum uh, variable that's actually stored or running minimum for the uh, array. Okay, so now we can actually check that minimum value against the key that's been supplied to us. Uh, if it's uh, if the minimum is less than or equal to k, then we return true. And if it's if it's greater than k, uh, that means it doesn't satisfy the if condition. Then we return false. Okay. So this algorithm is rather um, big, a little bit more complex than like you know what we have seen in past. So take a moment uh, to absorb 
uh, what we just talked about or like you know rewind and listen again to understand and once you're ready uh, you can move forward but we're gonna jump into the code and take a look at the solution and this time because this is complex we can also run it uh, example uh, run it with the example step by step okay so let's go in the ripple and uh, we're gonna create a function contains dupes. It's gonna take an array. And it's gonna take this one. Or we can just call it k. And it's going to return a Boolean. Now, what we need is, we need a dictionary first to keep the uh, count, keep the indices and um indices and the values are uh, the array items okay then we need a min min dist um variable that's gonna have the running minimum then we're gonna simply loop over so is if we're gonna use um enumerate so index so in swift um your enumerate enumerated uh, gives you index and item. So you say for index and item, uh, it's, it's a tuple in array dot enumerated. Okay, it's a function. Uh, and then we're gonna check if the dictionary that item is not equal to nil. Okay, we're gonna come back to that one. And uh, we don't need else, we're simply gonna say dictionary item is equal to the index okay so we're going to store the index so this is how we can populate our dictionary now if we found the item uh, if we found an item in the dictionary that means it's been uh, it has appeared uh, once before or twice before and uh, we have an index stored previously so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to get the um, index, previous index. Okay, and we're gonna compute the gap between previous between um, index and previous index. Okay, now we're gonna update our minimum distance uh, variable uh, with min between the gap and the main disk, whichever has that value, okay? This is gonna give us the running uh, total or running minimum. And we're gonna simply say, if the uh, min disk at the very end when the loop is actually done is less than equal to k, okay? Then we wanna return true. Otherwise, we wanna return false okay so let, let's run it uh, through the example and then we can actually print um, outputs at different locations so let's first uh, do contains tubes and uh, supply an array one two three or one two three one and uh, let's give the value for the k equal to three okay so if i execute this right now we should get true Okay, so let's see how we get into true. Okay, so uh, we're gonna print here. Um, what do you want to print? Uh, we can print our item. So item. Okay, and uh, we can also print the uh, input array. Input. and uh, simply say array, okay? And uh, we also want to print uh, the value for dictionary to see what we have in the dictionary when we iterate over, okay? So let's run this. So as you can see, uh, input is one, two, three, one. Initially, the item was, when iteration started, item was one. So dictionary, we entered one with its index as zero. Then item was two, we entered one 
we already had one zero and we entered two at with one index and then uh, item three so we entered one zero two one and we added three with two index okay now eventually uh, we are going to find after we, we've gone through one two three eventually we're going to run into one again now in that case if you notice uh, we don't add another element but we actually update the index for one that is three okay that's when it goes inside this uh, if condition so we want to print previous index okay we also want to print gap to see like you know how gap was calculated or what gap was okay and uh, we also want to print our minimum distance so okay so now if you take a look uh, initially the input was this item was one dictionary we added one with uh, zero index so it go, it's gone through all that now item became one again so we entered into the loop uh, so you can say um, let's do this so you know that this inside the condition in the loop okay there we go all right, so now we are inside the loop and previous index was zero, which we can see one was uh, found at zero index. The gap com computed was three because current index is, um, hmm, we didn't print current index, so let's print current index. Okay, so uh, let's say print. So let's run it one more time. All right, so we are inside the loop again, um, inside the condition again. Previous index is uh, was found as zero. Index is three. So three minus zero is three. So gap was three. Minimum distance is three, okay? And then we get the dictionary that is one with uh, index three, two with one and three with two, okay? So that's how it's actually computing it. Now, let's say if we actually increase this. So we say one, two, three, one, two, three, and value for the K is two. Okay, now your uh, loop becomes different. Okay, so it, it's more expanded for more number of uh, input items, but it's more detailed so you can understand it better. So uh, we've gone through like, you know, we inserted one, two, and three. Um, into those locations okay so then we found one again now we say like you know the previous index was one zero now new index is three uh, so we compute the gap and we say minimum distance is three now okay so now it encounters two two is also present so we say previous index for two was one and the index was uh, the current index is four so four minus one is three so minimum distance uh, between three and three is three so nothing updated and then we found three again, and three was stored at index um, at index two, and the current index is five. So five minus two is three. So minimum distance is uh, once again um, three. Okay. So eventually the dictionary is updated with three was found. Latest three was found at fifth index. Latest two was found at fourth index, and latest one was found at third index. Okay, but none of these qualify uh, our condition because key's value is two and our minimum distance is three. That means uh, this is going to return false. Okay, so hope this example was a little bit helpful. And uh, uh, yeah, so hope you guys enjoyed this video and uh, I will see you guys in next video. I will actually recommend you to compute the time complexity. Um, time complexity, um, just to give you a hint, like, or just to give you the answer, it's O of N, but do make sure, like, you know, you compute it and see if there's if any difference. Um, and, uh, like, you know, as you learn, like, you know, do more calculations on time complexity, you're gonna learn it better. So that's why I emphasize, like, you know, even if I forget to mention it, please, please, please uh, compute 
time complexity just to make sure that you understand the concept better. Okay, so I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.